I've got a confession to make. I spent money on my compost bin. <gasps> I know, I know. I'm perfectly aware that I could whip up a somewhat functional composting structure with free pallets, used wood, chicken wire, old garbage pails, tarps, or even nothing at all. But what if I wanted to build my compost bin only once? What if I wanted it to last a lifetime? What if I wanted it to be a super functional containment vessel that truly honored the black gold within it? What if I wanted it, what if I wanted it to be downright sexy? Well, after years of building and rebuilding many wood compost bins on the cheap and seeing every last one of those bins rot away before my eyes much sooner than I would have liked, this time around, I set out to build a compost bin that would stand the test of time. And today, we're gonna head outside and I'll show you exactly how we built this beauty. What? It is winter. Hey there, I'm Jared, founder of the Vegetable Academy where I help serious home growers work toward vegetable mastery. If you're ready to unlock the true potential of your growing space, check out my free training down below in the description. There's a link there. Now let's get on with today's lesson. I'll start by walking you through the different components of this compost bin as they came into play throughout the build process. And then I'll finish by answering some common questions that relate specifically to the characteristics of this particular bin design. The build started by installing the galvanized post. They're one and seven eighths inch in diameter. What I loved about these posts was that I could pound them into the ground with a sledgehammer. No digging required. Two key pieces of equipment that made this job really straightforward was one, a post level. Keeping these posts level was really important to get the rails to fit later on. Another helpful tool to have for this stage was a trailer ball hitch to insert on the top of the post. This distributes the force of the sledgehammer evenly over the top of the post so that you don't mess it up with all that pounding. Next, I selected low cost galvanized steel studs to serve as U-channels to help me anchor the metal walls to the post at each corner. These are simply cut to length and screwed in with self-tapping screws. I chose corrugated metal siding for the interior walls of the compost bin. The corrugation of these panels is 7 eighths of an inch. They were thinner options available but I'm really glad I went with the thicker option because that corrugation is the key to preventing these walls from bowing outward when the bins are full. This metal siding might seem intimidating to work with at first but all you really need to do is pick up a metal cutoff blade and fit it onto your reciprocating saw and you're good to go. Once cut, these panels slid nicely down between the U-channels on each post and they were secured in place with a few more self-tapping screws. Originally I used the same galvanized steel studs for the U-channels on the front wall as well but they proved to be less effective here. Because these sliding boards are not actually fastened to the U-channel, now nothing failed using those galvanized studs as channels, but I didn't want to risk that. And I also wanted a nice sleek look here that had the strength to endure a lifetime. So I switched out the front channels here with one inch steel U-channels that are much stronger. However, they're not galvanized. So I needed to paint these first to match and they were still screwed in the same way as before. The added benefit of using switching to these one inch channels is that these cedar deck boards slide through them perfectly. Now since these cedar boards are actually removable, there's no tension element between the posts here. And I did notice after a bin was totally full, especially when I filled it quickly with a heavy load of compost, that was enough pressure to push these posts out ever so slightly, only half an inch to an inch at the most between the gap of four feet here but that difference was enough to make me want to add these tension elements. So this is just half inch metal conduit pounded flat at the ends with a sledgehammer so they can be screwed into the posts easily as well. And these tie bars are offset in front of the cedar boards so that they can remain in place while I'm sliding out the cedar boards. I don't want these tie bars here when I am working in the compost bin because my fork will hit it, shovel will hit it. That'll be annoying. So. I did want to make these tie bars really quick to remove and I can do so just by unscrewing a tech screw here. In the future, I'll probably make that even quicker somehow. And the last two little details are post caps and hooks on the center post because whenever we're out here dumping a load of compost, we're always looking for a place to put the pail. And that makes it easy. Now let's get into a few questions that are probably on your mind. First of all, what are the dimensions? That's an easy one. The bins are four feet wide four feet deep 
and four feet high. This is a lot bigger than most multi-bay bins which are usually built with dimensions of three feet, but a three foot cube only contains one cubic yard in volume. By increasing each dimension by just one foot to these four foot cubes, one of these bays now holds 2.4 cubic yards, more than double the typical multi-bay compost design, bringing our total capacity here to 7.2 cubic yards. Most compost bins are too small. Upgrading to a size like this allows your pile to build more heat, compost faster, and enables you to handle surges of organic matter throughout the season without problems with overflow. Both these solid walls prevent oxygen from getting into the compost pile. Compost piles actually don't need as much oxygen as you might think. Consider that composting happens naturally on the forest floor when only the top surface is exposed. In much the same way the tops of our compost bin are always exposed to the open air. There are also small gaps between the wall panels and the channels that allow a small amount of air to percolate through the pile slowly. Honestly though, I probably would have been concerned about this question myself had I not found a study that showed that the oxygen levels within compost piles are largely self-regulating. This particular study showed that after turning a compost pile, oxygen levels quickly diminish back to those similar to piles not turned at all. It turns out that these solid walls actually help more than they hinder because they maintain a higher moisture level within the pile. Most compost piles that I've worked with that I haven't built myself have too much ventilation on the outside and the organic matter around the outside walls dries and doesn't compost. The compost in the interior finishes, but all the scraps around the outside are left undecomposed. Lastly, we can get away with solid walls here because we're building oxygen pathways into our compost as we construct the piles. By including loose bulky material along with the sloppier contributions in the pile, we provide channels for air to flow through the pile without needing holes on our sidewalls. Could residue from all that metal somehow leach into the compost and contaminate my garden soil? First of all, galvanized metal products have been used to store and transfer drinking water for human consumption, and I don't think they pose any higher risk when they're out in this context in the garden. Galvanized metal is prepared by coating steel with a thin layer of zinc and that zinc is highly resistant to corrosion. But even if these panels did come into contact with something really acidic and start dissolving, that zinc would only join zinc already present in the soil. In fact, zinc is an essential nutrient that plants use to develop chlorophyll. The same goes for iron, another element that's already present in soil, so I'm quite comfortable having these panels in contact with our, our compost and garden soil going forward. Why isn't there a roof? Well, we live in a dry climate here on the Canadian prairies and any rain we get during the summer is welcome moisture for our compost piles. Similarly, I don't mind if the snow falls on the pile over the winter and seeps into the, the compost as it melts in spring. The one instance when it is nice to have a cover over one of these bays though is when we're actively using it throughout the winter. So I just got some simple insulated covers here that I made with rigid insulation that just simply rest on top of the pile. They keep the snow off and help the pile maintain its warmth as long as possible into winter so we can keep making contributions here even after it is well below zero. It's around minus 10 degrees Celsius right now outside and our pile is still showing a temperature of about 90 degrees Fahrenheit which is pretty decent for a cold winter day. This pile will eventually freeze solid but until then these simple lids do help keep the pile accessible and warmer so that we can keep making contributions. So there's a look at our metal compost bins. For a full list of parts and equipment I used in the build, see the written description below. Do you think it's going to stand the test of time? Or do you have any ideas to make it better? If so, leave a comment below. And if you're wondering how we manage our composting throughout a cold Canadian winter, then be sure to subscribe and stay tuned. I'll be making another video about that subject coming up soon. That's all for this one. Happy composting.